packaging and design for social impact. What is graphic design? It's a process in which we use typography, images, colors, icons, and other illustrations to communicate visually. The element of graphic design is lines, shape, form, texture, balance. Line. A line is a kind of shape which connects two or more points. It is also considered as one of the essential elements of graphic design. Line can be thick, thin, curved, or jagged. Line can be used at commonly found drawings or illustrations, textures or patterns, as well as on text composition whether to give emphasis, divide or organize context, or to guide the viewer's eyes. Impacts on lines also differ based on their attributes. Shape A shape is a two-dimensional external boundary of an object. Any object outline that has height and which can be considered as a shape. Together with lines, they form the foundation of your design. Form. A form is a three-dimensional shape that can be enhanced by adding shadows, perspective, depth, and texture. These attributes give a form an illusion and give the object a sense of place. Texture refers to the physical quality of the surface of an object in an artwork or de design. It also refers to how an object looks or feels like. An object can be smooth, shiny, hard, or soft. It can be 3D, real texture, or 2D, visual texture. Texture can be Balance is the creation of visual equilibrium by relating elements such as line, shape, color, shape of form in terms of their visual weight. from BSHM 1C. My lesson is all about layout and composition. Layout and composition are the building blocks of design. These two focus on the arrangement of your objects or elements on your design. We might be confused sometimes in using layout instead of layout. Um, please take note that these two are not the same. Layout is a verb, phrase, which simply means to arrange something, while layout is a noun which means how things are, are organized. Um, there are five basic principles of layout and composition. First one is proximity. Um, proximity is the process of placing related elements together. Elements that are not related to the group should be separated to show 
that these elements are not related to the group. Um, next one is white space. White space is not literally the white spaces that you found on the design, but rather the negative space between lines, paragraphs, and elements of the design. Um, there are two types of white space. First one is micro white space. This is mini space between uh, paragraphs, line, menu item, or other elements in a design composition. Next one is the macro white space. This large space between contents and elements. How important is white space? First is it improves comprehension. Space between lines in a paragraph make the content digitable and is scannable to the readers or viewers. Next is focus and attention. Macro white space help guide the viewers to the focus area in the design. And next is to guide the user through local grouping. White space helps you to achieve the proximity of your design. Um, next one is alignment. Alignment help designers to organize different elements in their composition. Uh, next is contrast. Con contrast means once one element is opposite to the other element. This does not only apply to colors but to typeface and size of element as well. Um, last one is rep repetition. Um, repetition simply means the use of same typeface, color patterns, or other elements to achieve consistency in your composition. That's all. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Naomi Jaime and let's move on to the next lesson which is the typography. Typography is the art of arranging text that makes it more readable and appealing to the viewer. It includes font style, typeface, and text structure. Some people misuse the term font and type as typeface. So let's explain first the difference between font and typeface. Font refers to the variation of width of a typeface while typeface refers to the text type. Font also refers to the format and storage mechanism of a text. There are types of fonts and it is categorized in three, the sans, the sans serif, and the display. Serif are fonts that have little stroke called serif on each end of the letter. They are typically used in format or traditional projects. Sans serif are fonts with no extra stroke. Sans serif means without serif as sans is a French word for without. And display are fonts that sometimes called as fancy or decorative fonts. Now let us, let us proceed in choosing a font or typeface. Whether you are a new or old in graphic design, one dilemma that most graphic designers experience is on what font or typeface they are going to use. One mistake that beginners commit is the misuse of the fonts or typeface. In choosing a font or typeface, it should portray the message you want to say to your viewers. In design, fonts and typeface do matter. Above are the samples of fonts or typeface that you are going to use in portraying your messages. Let's now dive in in the lesson 5 of module 7. Color plays a vital role in design and everyday life. It can draw your eye to an image. Sometimes, it can trigger an emotional response. It can even communicate something important without using words at all. So how do we know which colors look good together and which ones don't? The answer is simple, color theory. Color theory is a science that explains how colors relate and appear when combined into various schemes. It is an offshoot of color psychology, which explores colors and emotions. Both areas are crucial for anyone dealing with colors, whether it's a simple business owner, a designer, or an entrepreneur designing a logo or logo for a startup. Before we proceed to different color schemes, 
let us go over some terminologies used in color. First, U refers to pure, vibrant colors. Second, saturation refers to the intensity of the color. It ranges from black and white or grayscale to vibrant color. Third, value refers to the lightness or darkness of a color. For example, from light blue to dark blue. Color schemes. Of course, we can still remember the lessons about color during art lessons. We have primary colors, then secondary colors, and tertiary colors. A circular diagram of these colors is called a color wheel. Using this wheel, we can create our own color scheme or combination. Monochromatic color scheme. This color scheme only focuses on one color and often using variations of incorporating saturation or values. For example, if you chose the color blue, then you may have other colors under the same color family like sky blue, baby blue, navy blue, or dark blue. Achromatic color scheme. This color scheme only revolves on using desaturated colors like black, gray, and white. Analogous color scheme. Analogous color scheme selects a group of three colors that are adjacent in the color wheel. Complementary color scheme. These are colors that are direct opposite to each other in the color wheel. Usually, a combination of a primary and secondary colors. Split complementary color scheme. Split complementary color scheme uses the colors on both sides of opposite color. Triadic color scheme. This color scheme uses colors that form an equilateral triangle. It may be a combination of primary, secondary, or tertiary colors. Tetradic color scheme, also known as double complementary. This color scheme uses two pairs of complementary colors. but not the least, the lesson 6 of module 7. Images are not just limited to photographs. It also includes graphics and other illustrations. Having images on your composition makes it appealing to the eyes of your viewer. Take magazine as an example. Imagine that your favorite magazine contains no image. You do not want to read it right. This is the power of images. They are not just decorations on your compositions. Finding and placing the right image is not a difficult thing, as long as you know what kind of image you are going to use in your composition. Do you remember using clip arts on your project designs? If yes, then I encourage you to not use it today as we are over with the clip art era. Stock photos are not popular in any project. Most people are now relying on stock photos as they are free or sometimes cost less. These are various stock image websites all over the internet. The only thing that you need to do is to choose pictures or images for your composition. There are different file types of images and they are grouped into two categories, vector and raster. Vector is a type of image that does not lose its quality when zoomed in. Your image will not be pixelated when enlarged. Raster Opposite to vector, raster images became pixelated when enlarged. Vector image file extensions Encapsulated PostScript or EPS These vector formats are designed to produce high-resolution graphics for print. Being a universal file type, EPS files can be opened in any design editor. Adobe Illustrator Document or AI Most are preferable and commonly used image file type by designers. If you want to create a vector image, AI is one of the best tools for you. Raster Image File Extensions Join Photographic Expert Group or JPG or JPEG 
This file type is the most commonly used image file type since this is a registered type of image. JPEG images are known for their low C compression, meaning the image quality decreases when being enlarged. Portable Network Graphics or PNG This file type is known for having a transparent background. Images in this type are commonly used in web documents. Graphics Interchange Format This file type is known in its animated form. You can find them in social networking sites as posts or comments. JFs are often used in web pages as can load quickly due to its reduced file size. And that's all for today. Thank you for listening and have a good day.